It feels like over the past decade, it has been a race between companies to build the culture that employees want to work. It doesn't take much searching on the internet to run across articles related to the importance of company culture. More than ever, acquiring and retaining good talent is essential for every business. However, today, I'd like to shift your thinking of not what your company can do for you, but what you can do to feel the most satisfaction at work. Yes, we all want a good job with good pay and good benefits, but many of us want more than that. If you want a career that gives you meaning, energy, and purpose, then a lot of that is on you. Yes, company culture is important, but this is your career. This is your journey. The question that should be raised is, are you being intentional? As a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, I've had the opportunity to have hundreds of conversations with people about their career goals, hopes, and dreams. These conversations have provided me a foundation of research of when employees have felt excited, drained, frustrated, or even passion for their work. And we've all heard the statement, we all get 24 hours in a day, and if you spend eight hours a day sleeping, another eight hours a day at work, then you get eight hours a day at life. Well, I probably spend more than eight hours each day working, and I don't always get eight hours of sleep regularly either. I don't believe in the concept of work-life balance because it just doesn't work. What I'd like to propose today are five ingredients to blend work and life. Yes, I just said the word blend, not balance. BLEND is an acronym that gives you the five ingredients necessary to building a career that gives you passion and purpose. Let's start with the first disruptor, BUILD, B. Build a life that embraces this imbalance. When I think about work-life balance, I typically think of a traditional scale. You know, one plate holds an object of known mass while the other plate holds the object of unknown mass. You add that known mass until your scale finally hits static equilibrium or the scale is in balance. Think about work life on this scale. Once you get everything in balance, don't let anything move or you're back at the beginning trying to get everything balanced again. So don't get sick, don't let them change a system at work, and definitely don't go into management. You know, at our firm, we have a guiding principle that points to this. It states that we believe that making a living shouldn't interfere with making a life. The image we use is of a boat pulling a parasailer. I love this image. Why? Because it represents the tightrope of personal and professional satisfaction and the danger of one of those pulling too tightly or too much in one direction. Yes, professional and personal goals need to have equal tension, just like the boat pulling the parasailer. The other thing I don't like about the work-life balance visualization is that it seems if you have more life and less work, that that's equally better. Well, work can be hard, Life can be hard. There are days that work will require a lot out of you, and there are work days that will require a lot out of you. The sweet spot is not finding the static equilibrium, but a blend between the two that pushes you to be your best at both without breaking you. Build a life that embraces this imbalance. The L stands for love. Now, I know it is not comfortable to talk about love in the same sentence when we talk about our coworkers or the, the company that you work for, but it is imperative that you surround yourself with bright and passionate colleagues interested in seeing each other succeed. In Tom Rath's book, Vital Friends, he talks about the three-friend threshold. His research suggests that if you have just three close friends at work, that you're 96% to be more extremely satisfied with your life. He goes on to say, it's better to have a friend at work than a bigger bonus. Love is all about the environment and the people in that environment. 
E stands for energy. You must understand what gives you energy. In my own career, I've shifted from being client service facing to leading the training and development efforts and many cultural initiatives. For me, the moves were intentional. You don't have to be around me for any length of time to understand how passionate I am about the Clifton Strengths Finder. I first heard about Strengths Finder in 2008. I took the assessment, I got my five top themes of talent, read the report, and I agreed. It sounded a lot like me. Now, a lot of times these types of assessments hit the bottom of a desk drawer, and I may not even remember what the outcome was, but this report was different for me. I remember seeing colleagues who were getting opportunities for promotion or having success, and it usually seemed like their success was tied around learning a new skill or knowledge. I also remember colleagues who were, you know, maybe really detail-oriented, hard to get to know, kept to themselves, nothing like me, and I thought, I need to be more like them. But what the strengths report and the strengths-based information taught me was is that my greatest successes would come from being more of who I already am. Knowing that I don't have to be all to everyone and everything. Know what you're good at and get help with what you're not good at. The question I would like you to consider is when you get finished with a task, do you feel energized? You know, we all have those tasks that we're good at doing, but we can dread even starting those tasks. For something to be considered a strength, you must be able to do it well consistently, but you must also be able to drive some instinctive satisfaction from that activity. Gallup states people that use their strengths at work are three times as likely to report having an excellent quality of life and six times as likely to report being engaged in their jobs. To have a career that gives you passion and purpose, you absolutely have to know what gives you energy. Your strengths are unique to you, and your greatest room for growth is in your area of strengths, not weakness. The fourth ingredient is needs. You must find the intersection between the, your passion and the needs of the organization. And this doesn't happen overnight. It happens one conversation at a time with managers and mentors during your performance evaluations and discussions related to your goals. And I know many of you are thinking, Jennifer, I don't think I can just shape my job around what gives me energy. I work for this company. I have a job description. And it has these tasks. I'd like to suggest that you have more influence than you think you do. I would bet there is some small piece of your role that you really do enjoy. And if so, there is a need in your organization for that skill set. Find the intersection between your passion and the needs of your organization, and then focus on the fifth and final ingredient, dedicate. You must dedicate yourself for the long term. Specialize and hone your skills to become the expert your organization desires. Every organization wants employees that are excited, knowledgeable, innovative, and passionate. So what books should you be reading? What periodicals or newsletters should you be receiving? Who should you be following on social media or LinkedIn? What companies are known for being innovative in what you're interested in? Follow them and watch them. To quote Zig Ziglar, success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. Success almost always follows effort. Think about anything that you have done that was worth doing. It probably took your time, energy, and dedication. Your future success will be a reflection of your past efforts. In my own career, when things came around that were what I really wanted to do, I raised my hand, I volunteered, and I kept putting myself out there until the, those people saw in me what I knew I had in me. So why does the fifth and final ingredient mean so much to me? Well, 
I have dedicated myself to Stennett. This past February, I celebrated my 13th anniversary. So why have I stayed at Stennett for so long? Well, I found an organization that will allow me to build a life around imbalance. I love the bright and caring people that I get to work with. I get energy from doing my job. I have found a need that the organization has that intersects with one of my passions, and I have dedicated myself to being a subject matter expert in my role. So rather than trying to balance work and life, I invite you to take the blend challenge. Begin today to blend your work and life to build a career that gives you more than a paycheck. Thank you.